Okay, let's take a look at a worksheet. Remember that I mentioned the first two columns really is the same as we did last week for adjusting entries, adjustments. We're just adding two more columns, income statement and balance sheet, okay, on the right-hand side. So again, this internal document here, the purpose really is just to summarize information, making sure debit equal credit before preparing the set of financial statements. So that's all it is. It's an internal document. It's not disclosed to the public. Right. So some of the companies may do three columns. Some of the companies may do five columns altogether to be more complete. But really, you'll find these two columns, the information, exactly the same as the adjusted part, just um, picking the part that relates to income statement and copy it again. Picking the part that relates to balance sheet and copy it again. Okay, so let's take a look at how this works from the beginning, again, the first column. So, of course, after a lot of the transactions that happens, we summarize them. We already capture them in journals, summarize them in T accounts. Then it goes into trial balance. Okay, so the left-hand side in the beginning has all the accounts which <laughs> relates to the transaction that happens in a certain period of time. And, of course, it has the dollar amount. Again, this is from... T accounts, the summarized balance in T accounts, and we copy it to trial balance and unadjusted trial balance sheet. Okay. So then we total the amount, make sure that this part, the unadjustments, even before adjusting entries are recorded, debits equal credits. Okay. The reason why these two always equal is because remember in accounting how it works, whenever a transaction happens, we have at least two accounts that is affected. Could be three, could be four. But debit always equal to credit. Okay. So one side of the asset is affected. It's either one side of the liability is affected or the same part, asset account, the other side will be affected. Debit and credit will always equal. Okay, so the trial balance here, for each and every column, we want to make sure this part equals to each other. Okay, so this is the first column. Second, just briefly review the adjustments here. There's A all the way to H adjustments. We have a couple of entries here. So if we take a look at two examples, say the accounts receivables. So originally we have the balance $2,200, which means later on there will be cash received $2,200. Now the adjustments here, you see $400 also on the debit side. So we will have to add this two to $2,200. Because remember, asset normal balance is the left side, the plus side. If the 400 is on the right side, then we have to reduce it. Okay, but since 400 is on the left side, that means that there must have been some type of service provided. You can see the other side, the 400 is here. Service revenue provided, but not yet collected cash from customers. So this is an additional two accounts receivable. So you see the adjusted balance here, $2,600. Okay, so this is one example we went over last week. Another example here, an earned service revenue credit 600. So what does this mean? An earned service revenue credit means... So first of all, what is the normal balance for an earned service revenue? It is a liability account meaning that it has the opposite direction as compared to asset. So the normal balance side will be the right-hand side, the credit side, meaning that whenever there is accumulated liability, it will be reported on the right-hand side. So this $600 means that the company now originally has $600 liability. With the adjustments, we put it under the debit side. What does that mean? Liability is being reduced, right? So $200, the unearned service revenue represents the cash you collected in advance, but you haven't provided service. And now we did provide a third of the service that's worth $200. So then at the end, we have a final adjusted balance, $400, meaning we still owe client $400 worth of service. But it's no longer $600 because we have provided part of that already. 
Okay, so this is another example of the adjusted trial balance after adjustments. So again, at the end, we want to make sure that the adjustment columns, these two will balance, these two would always balance. Okay, these numbers could be different because remember, we're doing adjustments. It has to be different later on. But debits and credits will equal to each other. Debits and credits for each and every column will equal to each other. Okay, now if we add in income statement column, just by its name, this is a column that represents only income statement accounts. So you can probably already guess what will fall under that column, right? That would only be revenues and expenses. Okay, so when you look at an adjusted trial balance, you can just draw a line or draw an imaginary line. All the accounts that fall below this will go into income statement column as well. And it's exactly the same. Okay, we're just copying and pasting this because this is an income statement column. It just represents all the income statement categories. So all the revenues, all the expenses. So the purpose of this column is just like a draft of income statement. You see the information here, and later on you do the same thing for income statement. Okay, so above the line here, those that are not income statement categories will later on fall into the balance sheet category. Okay, those are the asset account, liability account, and stockholders equity account. So there's one thing that you have to make sure that you know here. You can see that the last part here looks a little different from all the other columns. So earlier we were summarizing transactions, debits equal credits. Here, just because it's income statement column, very rarely would you see revenue exactly equal to expenses. Right? Because remember, the whole purpose of this statement, this income statement, is to figure out net income or net loss. So in this case here, you have the right-hand side, revenue is 7,600. Left-hand side, all the expenses, 3,900. Do we have a net income or a net loss? We have a net income, right? Because revenue is more than expenses. This is pretty obvious, right? So the right-hand side is more than the left-hand side. We do have net income. Just for the purpose of bringing these two debits equal credits up, just for the purpose of this, we put the net income amount here. Okay. So this $3,700, it's under the debit side, but really don't apply any debit credit rule to this. So the whole purpose of this is for the worksheet to make sure accountants, they do the debits and credits right. We want to make sure that each and every column, we see the two numbers here, exactly the same. Okay, so you do have the original revenue here, expenses here. If you find net income, put the net income next to, right below expenses, just to bring up this side so these two equal. Okay, so there's no debit credit rule here. Don't read too much into this. We're just putting net income here, and if it's net loss, then it's put under the right side. Okay, whichever side is missing amount, we just put that amount in between. Okay, so this is just one thing special about an income statement column. At the end, we don't, we don't just leave the revenues and expenses here. We still bring up the two to equal to each other. Just put net income under expenses. If it's net loss, it'll be under revenue. Just to bring up the balance, that's all it is. Okay, moving on from income statement column. Again, I just mentioned this. If you have net income, we put it under the left side. Net loss, we put it under the right side. Okay, no debits and credits rules involved here. Simply, we're just making the columns equal to each other. Debit equal credit. Okay, last column, balance sheet column. Again, just by its name, so all the asset account liability, stockholders equity, um, common stock retain earnings account, all the equity accounts will be copy and paste to balance sheet column. All these numbers really are exactly the same as adjusted trial balance. Okay, we're just partitioning into the parts that belongs to income statement and the other ones that belongs to balance sheet. But you do see at the end net income also listed here. Right. So can anybody tell me why is net income also listed there? <coughs> the 
This is a balance sheet column, so why is net income there? Well, this will go back to equity, right? Again, equity belongs to, equity can be parsed into common stock, retained earnings. Retained earnings is the earnings kept all along the years, so the earnings will definitely incorporate this season's earnings. So the $3,700 is the new earnings made in this season. We will add to the original balance retain earnings, $3,200 there. Okay, so the $3,200 there is an old balance. Retain earnings is the only account within the entire balance sheet column that has an old balance here. Okay, all the other accounts, cash, accounts receivable, all the other accounts are the latest one. Only retain earnings waits till we summarize net income information. Then this will be add to thirty two hundred, then minus a thousand to become statement of retain earnings. Remember? Okay, so whenever there is net income, it adds to retain earnings. It's a plus to earnings account. So we add it under the credit side. If there's net loss, then we add it under the debit side. So this is another thing about balance sheets, since we don't have three columns for each and every statement, because really, if you think about retain earnings, there's only three <coughs> accounts there. There's only beginning balance of retain earnings, net income, and then dividends. And sometimes there's no, no, no dividends given out this season, then there's even no point for putting that account there. Right? So oftentimes, companies' worksheet will just omit statement of retain earnings, because there's only three accounts. But they do put net income here just to represent that this adds to retain earnings $3,200. So the $3,200 is a beginning balance. This is a new income that will add to that. There's also $1,000 that needs to be subtracted. Okay, so this is listed here just because there's no statement of retaining retain earnings column. Okay, so we just incorporate this in balance sheet column because really this is part of retained earnings that's represented in balance sheet. Okay, if we look at it all together, all five columns, it looks like this. Trial balance, adjustments, adjust to trial balance, and the income statement column you see net income listed here. If net income listed here at the same time, it will also be listed under the credit side of balance sheet because it brings up retained earnings balance. Okay, this part here doesn't involve any debit credit rule. This does. Okay, net income brings up retained earnings, so it's under the credit side. Meaning that if it's net loss, then you will see the two amounts here. Okay, if it's net loss in this case, revenue will be lower than expenses by the definition of net loss. Then you will put net loss information here. Net loss reduces retained earnings, so retained earnings normal balance is the right side. If, it reduce, it's, if it's being reduced, it will be posted under the left side. Okay, so this is an example for net income. You'll see both amounts here. Net loss, you'll see both amounts here. You now, at the end, if you look at each and every column, debits will equal to credits. We purposely make this happen. The first three columns has to be equal. If it doesn't equal, that means there's some type of error that you made while you journalize it. This part here, we purposely make, made it the same, just to put net income and net loss here. This part here, we also purposely make it the same, to put net income and net loss here. Okay, but the first three, when you post the final balance from T accounts, it has to equal to each other. Otherwise, you need to go back, trace all the transactions that you've recorded. Okay, any questions before we do an exercise? I know it's a little tedious, it's a little complicated, okay, but when you get to the problems and actually do a set of these, it's really not that hard to follow. Okay, really the core idea is very, very easy. The core concept here is just to capture all the business activities, figure out the profit of the activities, then figure out overall what is the total assets that you own, what is the total liability that you owe, what is the net worth of the business, and what is the new earnings that you made. Okay, that's really all, the, all it is, summarizing this entire worksheet.